Do any of you have questions you'd like to address to any of us? Because I, one of the things I was thinking is the, the type 2 diabetes study that was done, it just seems so relevant to all of our youth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know there's a lot of work with Project Healthy Schools and literacy in general, and I'm wondering if there's a way to, to translate that. And I also wondered about, I work in the disability community, and so I wonder, um, you know, you had 22 participants. How were you certain that all of them were going to be able to use that CD-ROM and the computer at home? How did you make sure that that actually occurred? Right. Because um, we can provide things, but providing it doesn't mean that then we have a way that they're going to actually use it. Mm -hmm. Uh, my area of focus is chronic disease management and prevention, so I do see this as a program that could be translated to prevention in other illnesses, other disease prevention. Um, but one of the issues was in the CBPR process, we were working with the community members to identify the priorities within the community and type 2 diabetes prevention was the primary priority. So that would be our first step. And as we move forward, we really want to evaluate the program to make sure that it is successful. Because it is a pilot study. We had pre-post, six-week post with a three-month follow-up. And the clinical measures, we want to make sure that this does make a difference. And then we would most definitely like to translate it to address other issues related to health um, in adolescent populations. As far as the CD-ROM, we were very careful to identify its use. And um, with the qualitative interviews, we made sure that we asked at all levels, the community, the parents, as well as the youth, do you use the internet? How often do you use it? We made sure that they would. And this was in the, um, you know, the medium that they wanted. They didn't want the paper pencil. We still had handouts. We had, um, the reason the program is called Challenge is because we use self-management related um, program activities, including setting goals. We don't call them goals, we call them challenges. So it's a challenge over a week. Each session was held weekly. They would come back and if they wanted to share their challenge, they set challenges of, I'm not going to eat Cheetos this week. You know, and I keep saying Cheetos, but believe me, they said Cheetos hourly. Yeah. And I heard my kids are obese and Cheetos are a thing. Yes, they, they are, are Cheetos, a thing. So. So we yeah. really made sure, then during the process evaluation, we also asked, is this the medium that you would like to receive information? And yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Can I guarantee that they will use it? I can't. I couldn't do that even for an adult population. Um, but we have added, as well, a social networking component. And we will be very careful about how that directs Re, you know, specifically relates to the messages that we want communicated mm -hmm. and also um, protect their privacy and um, motivate them to continue their behaviors, adoption really, of the prevention. One of the hard things is that if you're in, in an area that's already impoverished in other ways, will there be a computer that they will go use and make sure it's available to them? I was very surprised that um, I would say all of them said that they had access. Whether or not that was true, I don't know. But it was either at the school, and many of them go to the library, public Three library. Mm -hmm. yes. I was like on your, your question, if I may. When you're dealing with older adults, and I don't mean young older, but older older, okay, some of them may have math anxiety. Mm -hmm. And if they have math anxiety, I've, I know from my own research, uh, they think that, well, that uh, extends over to technophobia as well. Mm -hmm. And it's really challenging for just to even talking about uh, when you use computer, no, 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 I, I don't even want to know about it, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how you address it when you're dealing with people that say 80 and over, mm -hmm. CD bombs and that kind of thing. And the health um, interventions that I've been associated with, we used video, we used. Um, written workbooks. Um, and I know that Dr. Baptist and I have discussed incorporating a DVD CD-ROM. So it would have to incorporate modeling 
it would have to be um, one of the things that I've been told by community members is everyone has a DVD player now. So we would have to then incorporate CD-ROM and video into that. I would think that would be the best way to reach an adult population. Yeah, our instruction is all one-to-one -one in person. We have a couple computer labs, but people self-select to, to go to those, and you're right, it's mostly the under 65. I mean, not even older, older, but younger than younger, older adults. Does that make any sense? Thank you. Um, I actually had a question for you. The program that you did sounded wonderful with having the whole family there. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm wondering in this uh, working on literacy is in what medium did you get the evaluations? We did have a written evaluation, but we went over it together. And so we wrote it as plainly as we could, and we would read each question and then you know, say one is so one to five. Did it. So everyone did it together, and then we read through it. It was tricky because. I think yeah, I think that's a really important thing to put in your presentations mm -hmm. because we're so used to just having written evaluations, mm -hmm. hand them out, and if that's all you had said, people wouldn't have that tip. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Anna? Um, we're all doing wonderful work. But the question that comes to my mind is, is anything starting in the school system? I mean, I know in Ann Arbor are doing certain things, but in the places where you work, I mean, is there kind of a little germ of something that's going to address this problem on a, on a larger scale? There, my concern and um, is the graduation rate. Because if we look back and think about that, 53% of Hispanics graduate from high school and about 55% of African Americans do. And that is, that's nationwide. In Detroit, we have schools uh, with a graduation rate of 23 all the way up to 97% at Cass Tech. So that's an Yes. I'm sorry. No, Cass, I, I understand. I run into Cast Tech alum everywhere, and they're very proud. So yes, um, but you have this disparity within the school system, and um, right now, at the school district level, I think that there is um, an effort being made to one. You know, one of our partners, communities and schools, is very aware of issues related to health literacy, and they are trying to incorporate more of that into their program activities. The Michigan model includes some activities that are very much addressing health literacy, so that would also be appropriate. Um, I don't know how many of the schools are implementing the Michigan model, um, but that is an evaluated program, so that would be helpful if they were. I don't know if you know. We deal with adults, and from the adult education perspective, health literacy is not something that adult education programs have really folded in in a core manner. It's maybe addressed peripherally. The effort in adult education is so focused on workforce right now um, for and retraining, uh, and retraining uh, for obvious reasons. But a large part of that is driven by the funding that's available for adult education, depends on the outcomes in employment. It looks like we're not going to be able to look at the website. Kate, are you, Kate how do you make, get a display here again? I'd like to just make a couple things really clear about it, though. One thing is uh, that this is a site for health professionals to use. This is not a site that I, you would likely send somebody who is having a, an issue with literacy to. 